on the phone. It's a pleasure to welcome to the program the CEO of This Week in Blackness and the media director of Netroots Nation, uh, Alon James White. Uh, Alon, welcome to the program. Oh, thank you for having me, sir. So, all right. So, Alon, you were obviously uh, at Netroots. You were um, uh, covering Netroots and also, I guess, uh, functioning as uh, the media director. Uh, and I know that you sat down with Martin O'Malley after he got off the stage. And I want to, you know, I, I want to, uh, before we get to your reaction to what O'Malley had to do, I want to get your sense of, 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 of net roots from your perspective. I know that you've been there for at least the um, past several years. Obviously, you, you, you work for them and you're, you know, or work um, uh, with them. Um, give me your sense of how the, the, the conference is sort of evolving. Um, well, the, top, the overall net resignation uh, has a, a it's, like I said, it's, a, it's the largest progressive, uh, a progressive conference in the country. And one of the issues that uh, Netroots had, especially when I first started coming like maybe five, six years ago, uh, is that it, well, first of all, it was a very uh, white space. It didn't actually represent uh, the Democratic base as a whole. And over the years, that has actually been changing. While it is, it is nowhere near what it needs to be, it is still evolving in that way. And the power of Netroots is also being used in different ways, like the, re like the very fact that we were in Phoenix in the first place. I believe, like, last year when we were in Detroit, a lot of attention was brought there about the water crisis, and it, and it was great. But then people came and people were able to work with activists on the ground and support that space. And the same thing was, was basically the point of going to Phoenix and now next year going to St. Louis. So it's become this space where actively going into, into – in places in the country that are having problems and bringing the activism, bringing the attention to that space to hopefully support the people on the ground that need the help as opposed to what happens a lot of times within the progressive space and the democratic space where you think someplace is a problem and you kind of just write it off and you're like, well, then you shouldn't live there. Come to somewhere that's more liberal. Instead, just go into spaces and say, no, we're going to, we're going to have this conversation and hopefully help make things better. You know, it's interesting because I just um, interviewed uh, David Dayen who um, went to, you know, and uh, this was the first uh, Netroots that I wasn't able to attend. Um, and he he made the same point, that he feels that it's evolved into, um, you know, from that sort of uh, a narrow, uh, white, um, sort of blogosphere um, world through almost a, a professional left into a more activist uh, grassroots um, hub, if you will, and, and one that sort of that that does go in to energize different local activists. And uh, was it your sense that there was a strong contingency of, of local ac activists, uh, you know, at the conference? Uh, absolutely. Uh, the network actually did reach out to a lot of different places. What we actually had went down to uh, Arizona before the conference had uh, happened, and we produced a series called the AZ Dispatch, where uh, I went and I, I talked to various activists and spaces about what was happening, what, what, what issues were going on in Arizona as a whole and right by, by the border. And we, we talked about Operation Streamline. We talked, went to the Colibri Center. Uh, we talked with, with No More Deaths and, and, and what did the migrant trail just to like, like talk to them and find out what their work looked like and then try to say, okay, great, we're going to highlight this. We're going to push this to the forefront um, over, so that people can have to see exactly what's happening because a lot of people, even during the conference, were, had never heard of Operation Streamline. And it's like that's the point, like getting the, these issues in front of people's eyes. And I think that's great. But there, there was some issues. Like that's why uh, the Black Lives Matter um, uh, protests ended up happening because they felt as if they, they weren't in fact included inside that space. So I, I like I said, as much as there was work done to uh, to connect and be a part of the local community, there still has to be more involvement and in bringing more people in, to the table when making these. Uh, of making these decisions. What was, I mean, was it your sense, and obviously you can't, you can't um, speak for the protesters, but I'm curious as just a, as, as a participant um, and as somebody who was in the room, was it your sense that the, the protest was a, um, was uh, about the lack of inclusion or attention 
um, uh, given the issues around Black Lives Matter at the conference or uh, one in which there is a sense that the um, those two candidates anyways, uh, they were the only ones there, um, were not as in touch with these issues as they should be. And on scenes, uh, Tia Oso, uh, who was actually on stage, uh, uh, except, uh, said this numerous times, that they did not, in fact, go in there to protest O'Malley or Sanders directly, but it was, this, was a con- this was a conversation about uh, the inclusion uh, of, of these issues of uh, being part of the platform at Networks Nation, coming into a space like, uh, like Phoenix and not having uh, folks in Phoenix like Tia Oso and that group being a part of the, I guess, the, the overall agenda. And the fact that, and, and basically a critique of the overall progressive state as a whole, which is in fact very, very white. And if this is, this has been a problem that's been uh, going on for years. And it seems like progressive state don't seem to understand no matter how much like commentary around like, hey, the white progressive state is really problematic. Hey, you're not bringing very inclusion. Hey, you're constantly telling folks who are in marginalized spaces that their, their issue will come. But you have, we have to work on these bigger things. So this affects everybody. And then if, we, if we fix this, and, and everybody will be better. It's like, but we are having certain issues that are directly affecting these communities, and you have to directly address them. Otherwise, they won't get fixed. And you, and you know this because it's been many, 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 many years, and these issues aren't even time to fix. Right. And, and, and do you uh, – give me your sense. I mean, and obviously, I mean, you're uh, – your media director of, of Netroots, and so, you know, we'll, we'll take that. But, I mean, give me your sense of, I mean, there seems to be, there's two critiques there. Um, one is that that Netroots uh, in particular uh, was not um, providing that kind of space to talk about those issues. And then there's the broader critique of the, the uh, progressive movement in general uh, is not doing it. Give me your sense about the the critique about net roots. I mean, was that do you, do you think that was also a a valid uh, critique of that net roots? Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, the fact is, like as much as the work is being done to make, uh, broaden the uh, the overall uh, campaign that net roots brings and the, and the coalition that comes on with it, it still, it, it still hasn't been fixed. I mean, there was uh, there was a uh, a talk with us of some native folks who felt like they were not, in fact, involved in in in, in that route, and they felt like they were being uh, they were ornaments on on the on the space, and they ended up that we there was a immediately put together a panel to discuss that particular issue, mm-hmm. and so I believe that net, the net root space um, wants to be as inclusive as possible, but the fact is it's very it's not always easy, especially when it when the space is created like. It's, it's it's created out of like this the whole white progressive state. So there's right. just there's only but there's there's a lot of fighting to fix just like the very nature of how everything works. And that was one of the reasons why I even joined the Netflix team was to specifically make the make the space more diverse. That's why we broadcast there. Uh, we have our, our the, the Twitter media stage, and I and I highlight a lot of di- uh, diverse voices, and we put uh, put people of color, we put marginalized folks, we put trans folks on the stage to let them have that space. Uh, but at the same time, that's, I mean, that's our, my attempt to help do that. But there still is a lot more work to be done. And the thing is that everyone knows that. It's just about making sure it happens. And so when I see something like uh, the BLM, uh, the Black Lives Matter protest, I understand what happened. And I'm like, well, this is something that we need to look into. We have to continue absorbing this and don't, not looking at it as some sort of attack on uh, Netflix because the fact is that Netflix doesn't want to be what the white, uh, what the white progressive state looks like. It's trying to be more uh, inclusive. It's trying to be, uh, uh, make sure that it looks like the democratic base. So while, it, yes, it was definitely a critique on us, and I think that it needs to be, that we need to uh, uh, accept it, absorb it, and then fix it. But this, I really do look at this as a a much bigger uh, situation with the progressive space as a whole. So, okay, and, and let's turn to the um, uh, the the critique of the candidates um, because uh, I mean it was clear, and and you spoke to O'Malley afterwards, but it was clear when he responded with "All Lives Matter" that um, he was basically saying, like, I ha- I'm not totally up on this, <laughs> um, on what's going on here. But, and, and I think, um, you know, my sense is that uh, Bernie Sanders 
was in some respects uh, even um, less willing to uh, get off of his um, of his, uh, I guess, uh, already, I guess, uh, predetermined agenda, as it were. And I, and I say this as a as a as a Bernie Sanders um, supporter. Um, but give me uh, give me your sense. I mean, one thing that occurs to me. I mean, now uh, O'Malley may not have been able to understand, like you know, saying all lives matter is in addition to not getting what uh, the the sort of the rhetoric of the name Black Lives Matter. It was specifically something that people were using um, on online to to sort of quash. <laughs> Uh, that uh, dissent. Aside from him not uh, knowing that, and you know, uh, so he's not up on his, uh, you know, w- w- what's happening with w- w- on Twitter. Do you think? I mean, from from your perspective, again, not asking you to speak uh, for these protesters, but uh, your sense of the movement in general. My my sense is is that sometimes there are some of us who perceive it as more metaphorical than uh, this issue set is really about, uh, as opposed to sort of, you know, broader, more uh, ephemeral uh, questions of of white supremacy and systemic racism that, in many respects, um, uh, Black Lives Matter is about specifically the threat to black lives. I mean, exactly. I mean, and I think it's it's been said so often, which is why it's very frustrating when people uh, misrepresent the concept of Black Lives Matter and, not matter and the reason why people are annoyed or upset when the All Lives Matter gets dropped or the White Lives Matter, too, or whatever gets dropped. Because the fact is, there's never been a question of whether or not White Lives Matter. It's not like the fact is, like, we know that White Lives Matter. If someone, <laughs> like, if you get, if a white person gets shot and killed, they're not, it's not like, oh, well, I, there, there's going to be excuses for as to why it happens. There's going to be, like, actual uh, uh, investigation. It's going to be looked into directly, whereas with black folks, it's actively, we're constantly dying. It's just, there's a state of emergency within the black community, and everyone's yelling about this, and then people aren't understanding, and they're looking at it, and they're, they're looking at this issue as if it's like, like another just random random uh, progressive policy thing that w- would make things a better. Oh, if we do this little thing, thing here or there, as opposed to the fact that like people are dying, people are afraid to critique the Black Lives Matter uh, protest. Is, 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 it's like critiquing someone who's in a burning fire saying you're yelling wrong. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. And, and I mean, I think that is, I mean, that, and, and I think to a certain extent, my sense is, is that uh, often the, 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 re- the responses and not even necessarily the critiques, but the answers uh, to those cries are a little bit more, um, I I guess to to extend your metaphor, it would be, uh, well, you know what we've got to do, we've got to install uh, uh, sprinkler systems in uh, all the houses uh, around the block. Well, this one's already on fire right now. And so uh, that's a great, if if, if we add, if we add a, a, a better lining into the buildings, then these fires won't happen while people are still in the, in the building. Right. And while currently burning, and you're not actively dealing with it. And then when people are upset, people wonder why. And uh, like, and just a, a prime example of this, everyone keeps yelling about how uh, how uh, um, um, Bernie Sanders was being shouted down. And it's like, I was there. It's like, and, and, and now, honestly, what happened was he came out, he had the opportunity to respond. The protest had already started. The protest had inter- inter- interrupted O'Malley. O'Malley, as problematic as uh, he uh, has been, at, at least acknowledge what was happening on the protest, acknowledge what they were saying, then screwed up with the whole All Lives Matter, White Lives Matter, then immediately came back within, I think, an hour and a half to go do uh, our Twitter media stage. I sat down with Eldroy Williams, uh, one of my uh, uh, anchors here at the Speaking Blackness, and immediately apologized and, and said, like, uh, and dealt with what happened, whereas Sanders didn't do that. And everyone's like, oh, well, they're attacking Sanders. Like, well, there's, it's not so much an attack. It's like if you don't, you have to know, you know your audience. If you know that right. before you come up there, there would be a protest. People are upset. There is this big issue. You are running for president, and you, there is this issue that has been in the forefront of media for at least the past year. And you come out with a platform that does not, in fact, address this, this, these actual issues. And then when people come there, speak out and say, hey, we're upset. This is happening. Please speak to this. Say her name. And then you get up and on stage and you can't do it. You refuse to do it even. This is when the problem happens. It's not so much that people were going to attack Bernie Sanders. They're like, oh, he's, you know, he's, he's our, oh, your, your ally. Well, I was like, that's great. He's an ally. But has he actually laid out anything about how he, it will 
will actually deal with this? Has he put down some policy that will actively deal with this state of emergency? And if you can't do that, you, can, you just say, oh, well, of course, or like, oh, well, yes, Black Lives do matter. And we shouldn't, this shouldn't happen. And I, I, want, I want some reform. It's like, what, what are you saying? What's going to happen? What are you going to do? Are you meeting with folks? Are you, are you talking to the community? Or how are you putting together your plan in the first place? You can't just say nice things because especially between black folks and the progressive, the progressive states and liberals and Democrats as a whole, we have been ignored so often and we have been let down so often. Our issues are not put in the forefront. Our vote is very important, but our issues, now yeah, we'll get to it. And it's getting to the point where it's like, Enough is enough. If you want, if you actually want the support, because the fact is, no Democratic candidate can win without Black folks or, and specifically, Black women. So, if you want this this vote, then deal. Make sure you have this as a very prominent aspect of your platform. And if you don't, then you're going to be called out. And that's the point of protest. That's the point of primary. What What do you think um, of and 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 my. And, and I just want to sort of shift this slightly because I think the you know my 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 sense is is that 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 is the one what you've just articulated is the the um, one I guess uh, point that hasn't quite um, you know permeated pe- some people's mind <laughs> you know understanding that that there is in some respects what is being um uh demanded is 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 fairly narrow uh in its scope obviously rather deep in terms of its importance but but it's not you know i mean you know just go back to that metaphor of we can we can um you know implement fire safety codes in a in a way that makes sure that this neighborhood has fire safety uh proper fire safety codes to prevent uh fires etc cetera, etc cetera, but uh, or, or or to deal with it but we're not we they're not just saying like you know we've got ladders here and we're going to go in and save people from this burning house um you know one being much more intense but also narrower where do you think there is a role for some of that broader reform or can that not come until this first thing is addressed? I absolutely believe that there's a room for uh, the broader reform. And the thing is that that conversation should happen at the exact same time. No one's saying it shouldn't. But you have to address what's happening at, at the moment. You have to address what people are living in fear of. Like there, there's, a, there's a possibility by the time uh, the election comes, comes up, so that, uh, some, one, one of those people who were in that hall protesting uh, saying Black Lives Matter will be dead. You know what I mean? And that's, there was, that's why it's so important and that you have to, it has to be spoken on. Now, please, add uh, the broad reform. After you, after you say, hey, we're going to, we're going to deal with this thing, this movie, oh, on, on day one, I will make sure ABC happens. I will create this task force. I will meet with ABC. I will have these people uh, uh, advising so that we can make sure this, this actually gets fixed. And then we're going to have to look at the broader system. How do we add this ABC over here? How do we uh, fix this over there? How can we put uh, certain issues uh, together as a whole, but this has to stop now, and I'm going. I'm willing to do the work to make it make, make this happen now. Is Everyone, it, no one would complain. Is it, Everyone's like, fine. Now, will we trust them? Will we believe them? Well, we don't know, who right. knows? Because the fact is, a lot of people lie. Right. Uh, well, and and is it your sense that this the the um, the the solutions uh, can come from a from the federal government as opposed to uh, state governments, or is this uh, is this another uh, chew gum and walk at the same time type of situation? Yeah, I, I think that's exactly the case. I think that we, it should be still looked at uh, on, on the local level and in the state level. But there are things that can happen, like, like uh, when, especially the fact that when he, when he uh, appoints the attorney general, who, what type of attorney general will he appoint? Like, there are things that is going to happen from the from the uh, the, uh, the presidential space. And we, there needs to be a, a knowledge that this, this, this is going to be a very important thing. This platform is going to be used to change this. He's going to use the bully pulpit to make sure that these types of policies get pushed down. That he's going to use his power uh, in, in any way that he can to, to push down certain ideas, push down uh, certain uh, 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 legislation uh, that, that can happen, that can will actually help the issue. And once that's laid out, then people... People will become much calmer. People will like, okay, fine, you're hearing what we're saying. Okay, let's hopefully, I'm, even though they might not trust, they'll say, let's see what happens then, as opposed to 
what's happening now, where it just feels as if people are screaming, saying, hey, you want our support, help us, and they're going, well, we'll get to it, but there's, there's a bigger picture. Like, 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 what are jobs? Like, great, I can have a job and still be killed. Right. <laughs> That's not right. I mean, job is not going to make sure the cops won't kill me. Right. I mean, particularly in, in, in the context of being in the wake of uh, Sandra Bland's death. I mean, that, I mean, exactly. she's on her way to a job. I mean, in all of these, the idea of that, that he couldn't say, like, like, it was like to say her name, that, that literally what they were asking, say her name, Sandra Bland, say her name, Sandra Bland, and he couldn't say her name. Like, because it's not like you need to know anyone. Like, like people are telling you. And there's people like and there's people that are willing to have the conversation and meet with them because I, I know for a fact there was a meeting with a bunch of black activists and and, uh, and black media spaces. I was invited to that meeting, and then Sanders canceled it. And after he had that in the morning, you would have thought that he would be like, okay, well, we need to, I need to at least understand this. I have some meetings with folks. This was all really tough for me. Let me try to figure this out. And then he ignores it. And so as as great a uh, uh, a, 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 a liberal as he might be and a progressive, he, he has uh, obviously has a, uh, has a lot of support. You still you're not you're not showing it. You're not showing it to the people that are literally begging you to like say, hey, talk to us. Please please say something to us. Wait, figure this out. Yeah, I mean putting I mean putting any type of um, uh, any other type of assessment aside for the moment, which I think you know uh, isn't. Um uh, isn't necessarily, uh, you know, what we what we should do, but it, it ju- it's just bad politics. <laughs> I mean, it's just it's just it's, it's, just, it's just bad <laughs> politics. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, um, I I would uh, much rather, um, you know, I know I'm not one of the people who really cares about uh, a- authenticity or sincerity, but for it being a measure of 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 a, a means in which to predict future actions, but. Um, I'm more concerned with 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 results. At the end of the day, I would much rather a cynic uh, who delivers me results than than one who is uh, good-hearted and is not. But it, that's just it's just poor politics, and that's um, you know I say this as a, as a supporter of Bernie Sanders. I'm uh, I'm disappointed, and though there is you know some measure of indication that he at the very least got some part of the me- uh, the message in Dallas the next day, he uh, mentioned Sandra Bland's name. I don't know if that's quite uh, going far enough, uh, but um, and, and I would imagine. But, that I, but I think I think it's a, the, uh, the, the fact that that happened in the, in the uh, aftermath of that protest. The fact is, O'Malley was scrambling. He went and apologized. All of a sudden, uh, that night into the next uh, couple of days, Sanders started adding it to it, uh, his platform. Hillary Clinton well puts out a statement on Facebook yep. about this, and so to me, the, that's why the critiques around the Black Lives Matter protests I find incredibly problematic, especially from a progressive space. Because, like, did you just not see that the protest actually worked? Right, it's, it worked. That we are now talking about this issue. Of course, that it is at the forefront of it. Like, this is literally the point of protest. Yes. Right, of course, and and uh, you know I uh, I mean I, I, look I wasn't there, uh, but I am fairly confident that in the absence of that protest, aside from this issue not being addressed, I can I I I, I could guess more or less what was going to be said, and so <laughs> it's not like there was you know some great revelation that people were going to have, and uh, this was going to be you know I mean I think the um, uh, you know, it's uh, th- there was there was some movement on on something, and if there's movement on something, I think that's better than there not being movement on something. Um, but uh, uh, Alan, thank you so much for for coming on and uh, giving us your perspective. Uh, people can check out uh, your. There's multiple shows at this week in blackness. Uh, dot com. Uh, that but people... I, I, I show that uh, we, uh, that I host, and that a lot of times is covering a lot of this news at uh, Twitter Prime. Uh, so they can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, uh, and at thisweekinblackness.com. Thisweekinblackness.com. We'll put a link to it at uh, majority.fm. Uh, Alon James White, thanks so much for coming on.